I feel so sad for my staff who are so dedicated to helping these animals whose owners have let them down. A local animal shelter says irresponsibility is to blame for this little boy's dog being put to sleep. But the boy's family says it's the shelter's fault. This is News 3 Nightside with Gerard Romano and Anquinette Moon. Good evening, everyone. What would you do if your family pet turned up missing? You'll want to watch this next story because what you think is the right answer may cost your pet its life. It's the lesson one family's learning too late. Now they're having to explain to their five-year-old son why his best friend is dead. Rebecca Klein is live at the Animal Foundation. And Rebecca, they arrived to pick up their pet only to learn she'd been put to sleep. And Quinette, you may assume once your dog winds up here, he or she is completely safe. Yeah, that's true if your dog has a license or if you come in time. But once your dog arrives, his days are numbered. Now, in this family's case, they came to pick up their dog and said they'd return to pay for the dog. Only they came too late. The shelter says it's the family's fault. Tragedies like this one have to happen. Each of their days here could be numbered. If no one comes, they're taken from the shelter and put to sleep. That became Sadie's fate. I was in tears. This is my boy's companion for the next 10 years of his life. You know, I was going to teach him about responsibility. Ask the Animal Foundation's president. You'll hear this lesson is about irresponsibility. If their pet gets lost, for God's sakes, come find it. So many of these animals are wondering, where are you? They let this dog down. We did not. Sadie had no tags on when animal control found her. Her family came to claim her on her third day here, but did not have the money to take her home. They said they would come back. We hear that a hundred times a week. And we're not mind readers here. Once 72 hours pass, if the dogs are deemed aggressive, they're put to sleep. This dog was dog aggressive. He picked fight with other dogs. Other dogs have 30 days to be adopted. I don't know if my son actually realizes that she's never come back. We told him his dog's in heaven and that um, he wanted to know why. And we told him because Somebody evidently made a mistake. That someone, he says, is at the shelter. But does he really believe that's the whole story? Yes, a little irresponsibility on our part. I should never have uh, let the dog back out with Dalton without the collar and tags on. I'll live with that for the rest of my life. Back out here, the shelter tells us most dogs and cats do face a very sad fate. Only 18% of dog owners ever return to pick up their dogs. That number drops down to just 2% for cat owners. So how can you avoid tragedies like this? It's one simple answer, get a license. If your dog or cat has a license and you live within one mile of the shelter, the shelter will actually drive your pet home to you. If you live further, they will call you. Reporting live from the Animal Foundation, I'm Rebecca Klein, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Rebecca. Now, if your cat or dog is missing, you must go to the Animal Foundation in person. However, you can log onto the shelter's website at www.animalfoundation.com and see if your pet is there. They continually update pictures on the site of strays brought in. Now you will have to pay $10 in impound fees per day and you face additional costs if you don't have proof of shots, if your pet isn't neutered, and if you don't have a license. Now if you live in the county, you must go through the Dewey Animal Care Center. Police say first he shot and killed his neighbor in broad daylight, then he shot three police officers. Now, a California man is still tonight in a standoff with police. Officers say a Barstow man got in a fight with his neighbor this afternoon and killed him with a rifle. That's when police responded to the scene, and then he began firing at them as well. Tonight, a sheriff's SWAT team has arrived on scene, and Barstow officers are being assisted by the California Highway Patrol as they try to coax the man from his house. Police say he was already a convicted felon. He was arrested for assaulting a police officer in Arizona. The FAA is calling a helicopter crash in Red Rock Canyon this week a training accident. 25-year-old Christopher Tuman, who lives here in the valley, and 30-year-old Robin Bajorvik of San Diego were only slightly hurt when the helicopter went down Thursday. The Federal Aviation Administration says Bajorvik was flying the helicopter to apply for a position as a flight instructor at West Air Aviation. Officials don't anticipate taking any action against either pilot or West Air. Thousands of people in Alabama won't be spending the night at home after a tornado ripped through the state, destroying everything in its path. 
Take a look. At least 10 people are dead tonight. Another 21 injured. This is the aftermath that you're looking at. A tornado tore through Tuscaloosa neighborhoods, causing mass destruction. Two area schools are now functioning as shelters. Well, the chances of a white Christmas look very strong for people across much of the northern and Midwest United States. Snow and ice are hitting Fayetteville, Arkansas, knocking out power and making travel very dangerous. Further north, blizzard-like conditions in Sioux Falls, where winds are gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour. And in Des Moines, Iowa, it's not so much the snow, but bitter cold conditions. With the wind chill, it will feel like close to 50 degrees below zero. Skiers wanting to hit the slopes in Colorado today had their hopes dashed by a huge white wall, better known as an avalanche. The avalanche dumped over three feet of snow on a 60-foot section of Interstate 70. Crews worked through the morning clearing the street and blasting the mountain where the avalanche happened just to make sure any unstable snow was knocked down. There won't be a special election in Las Vegas, at least not now. The recall effort against Michael McDonald has failed. Organizers hit the streets for about two months, going door to door, hoping to get 3,000 signatures. That's how many were needed to file for a recall. But yesterday, election workers told News 3 they didn't have enough valid names. Tonight, McDonald says he'll continue to concentrate his efforts on bettering the community. There are people that wanted to run for office that, uh, that all they have ulterior motives that really came out and they're the ones that are really behind this petition drive. So you have to really take in the characters of the people that were involved. Election workers tell us some people signed their name as many as 50 times and names like Frank Sinatra and Michael Jordan also showed up on the petition. In the first major decision of his new administration, President-elect George W. Bush has announced his choice for Secretary of State, retired General Colin Powell. A groundbreaking move because if he's confirmed by the Senate, Powell will become the first African-American to ever hold that position. In a school gym in Crawford, Texas today, Bush introduced Powell as the man who would become a giant among statesmen. Powell is enormously popular with both Democrats and Republicans and may be that unifying force Bush needs after his battle for the presidency. Powell says he hopes his new job is an inspiration to others. I want to repeat it because I hope it will give inspiration to young African Americans coming along, but beyond that, all young Americans coming along, that no matter where you began in this society, with hard work and with dedication and with the opportunities that are presented by this society, uh, there are no limitations upon you. And as Bush and Powell work together on their futures, Bush continues to build his administration. He's expected to announce Condoleezza Rice as National Security Advisor on Sunday. The price of progress has neighbor disagreeing with neighbor tonight because of a new construction project, a project that was supposed to make things a bit quieter in the neighborhood, but has people sounding off instead. A sound wall is scheduled to go up as a part of a project to widen 95 for about nine miles from Rainbow Curve to Craig Road. The inspection will push the freeway even closer to homes in that area. Some people say it's going to ruin their view. Others say they'll give up the sites to keep out the sound of the ever-increasing traffic. We have no problem with expanding the highway. People are coming to Las Vegas. We need the highway. I have no problem with the highway. But I do not see any reason to put in a sound wall and lose my view. It's getting louder and louder. And more traffic coming there, it's getting louder. And, uh, but what, what can you do when you uh, sleeping up there? Construction on the sound wall is scheduled for sometime this spring. The government is throwing millions of your tax dollars at a problem that plagues our Valley school kids. An education budget passed by Congress will add $10 million to the fight to keep kids from dropping out of school. But as Kendall Tenney reports now, the problem could be masked behind our strong economy. They fire teachers for stupid, stupid reasons that don't make any sense at all and the rules are too harsh. Jimmy is like a lot of students in Nevada. He has his reasons for considering quitting school. Nevada has a 17% dropout rate. That's almost double the national average and a 31% increase from 10 years ago. That's another thing that we can put on our record so everyone will get out of Nevada. Lots of like Jennifer Thomas and Juan Palmez tell News 3 it's tough to concentrate on school when you have the lure of a good paying casino salary. 
It's so easy to get a job around here that many people decide to work and make money and go get their education. Others believe changes in graduation requirements and difficult family situations make dropping out more appealing. Probably lack of motivation in parents because if you have a single parent and they're not always home to help you with your homework, you get really frustrated and then, you know, you just don't want to come anymore. You're like, well, whatever. It's important to note that the Nevada State Department of Education shows the dropout rate much lower, about half of the 17% in the Kids Count study. That's because the district goes on raw numbers of people who actually drop out, while the Kids Count data looks at all the 16 to 19 year olds who are high school dropouts. Well, you have a few more gray hairs. The years are creeping up on you, and now reading things isn't as easy as it used to be. The words begin to get fuzzy, and sometimes they get crooked. Sound familiar? It could be more than just aging eyesight. Coming up on News 3 Nightside, a new procedure that could reverse that. Plus, above average temperatures sweep through the valley. We'll see if they're going to last coming up on News 3, where news comes first. You're watching Channel 3, where news comes first. This is News 3 Nightside. Welcome back, everyone. As we age, many of us will slowly lose our ability to see clearly. For many Americans over 50, the cause is an incurable disease called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. But as Healthline's, Healthline 3's Beth Fisher has learned, there's a new painless procedure that's helping patients battle the darkness in a flash. Well, it's good to see you. Selena Stanford was terrified when she realized her vision wasn't what it used to be. Scared, very scared, because you think you're going blind. She was losing her sight due to a common disease called AMD, or age-related muscular degeneration, an incurable condition that made it almost impossible for Selena to read or drive. The words began to get fuzzy, and sometimes they get crooked. That's because aging blood vessels start creeping underneath the part of the eye Selena uses to read. But ophthalmologists say they can now help patients like Selena in a flash. A new treatment called photodynamic therapy uses a light activated drug and special laser to zap the bad blood vessels, sealing them with heat. This procedure offers a real hope for people with macular degeneration to maintain the vision that they have and hopefully slow down or even arrest their rate of vision loss. And for patients like Selena, that may give her a new look on life. To me, it's a wonder treatment. Marvelous that uh, someone has discovered this. We talked with local ophthalmologist Kurt Buzzard. He says we're in an exciting time for eye treatment. He says the best part of this treatment is you can do it without damaging the overlying retina or leaving a black spot in the patient's vision. Back to you. Thank you, Beth. Doctors caution that patients must stay out of direct sunlight for 48 hours after the procedure. The light activated drug and cause third degree burns to any part of the body that is exposed. So did you get out and enjoy the weather today? Got out a little bit this morning, probably not as much as I should have, but uh, boy, the weather was just right for a good run or yeah. a good bike ride. It's a little crisp. How about you? I think. I, well, no, I, I didn't get out at all. <laughs> what time did you get up is a better question. Whatever. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and take a look at our current conditions right now. Let's, Looking, shall we? Oh, let's see. Temperature right now is 44 degrees, 27% humidity. The wind is out of the west at 9 miles an hour, and the barometer is steady at 30.32. And Gina Giancinto has the rest of your forecast. Thanks, guys. Now let's check out our December watering times. It's recommended two days a week, two times a day at four minutes each watering time in between in the mornings, 9 to 11 o'clock. And let's take a picture of our satellite right now looking at the southwest. High pressure over the southwestern states that gave us our, our dry conditions and above normal temperatures for today. That's nothing like what's going on in the rest of the United States. Our infrared shows severe weather reported in the south and central Georgia and Alabama uh, region with uh, tornado watches. They did have a tornado in Alabama today, so hoping those people out there are doing all right. And let's check out our historical highs and lows for today. Nothing record-breaking, a high at 61, low at 39, and the sun's going to be coming up tomorrow at 646. Going to be beautiful outside. Looking at 63 degrees for our high tomorrow. It's going to be mostly sunny with the UV at 2 and 
keep watch of those winds because they are going to be picking up in the, in the um, afternoon area. And 8 o'clock, 46 degrees. By midnight, 41, and the sun coming up at 37 degrees. And now let's take a look at Lake Mead tomorrow. A low of 46 and a high of 70. It's going to be great if you want to go fishing or boating, whatever your plans are. Out of the mountain tomorrow, a high of 48. Make sure you put on that sunscreen. Even though it's going to be cold, we can get some sunburn still. Five-day forecast, high in the 50s to mid-60s until Wednesday, and then cooling off again on Thursday. And we're going to go right back to you guys. Thank you, Gina. Sunscreen in December. Uh, those of you holding out for a white Christmas, <laughs> don't, don't, count out. <laughs> don't hold your breath, I guess. Mount Charleston, though. It's nice up That's there. That's true. Take the drive. It's worth it. <laughs> Still ahead on News 3, a love story with all the bells and whistles. Except these originated from a casino. We'll explain coming up on News 3, where news comes first. Yeah! That's the Who's the man? man? What's tonight? Dinner at Spago, boss. Excellent. Shouldn't you be making toys? <laughs> We're digital now. We get the toys done in half the time. <laughs> oh. Yeah? Oh, Kiki, can you fit me in for a foot massage? Foot massage. Foot massage. A love of casinos brought them there, and tonight a Las Vegas couple brought a little love back to the casino. And I now pronounce you Clay and Tess, husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Clay Kid and his new wife, Terry, broke in the brand new wedding chapels at the Texas Station Casino tonight. The couple met there two years ago and have planned to trade vows there once they heard the chapel was being built. And not a bad ceremony. About 150 people attended. Good for them. While one couple celebrates a new beginning, another woman celebrates a historic mark. One special woman in Union City, California, is celebrating a very special birthday today. Sylvester Wilson is 108 years old. Believe it or not, she still has a sound mind and says her biggest love, aside from her daughter, is, get this, mashed potatoes and fried chicken. <laughs> she says that her secrets for staying young, along with the mashed potatoes and fried chicken, <laughs> is her church and her faith that keeps her young at heart. She's got a little rhythm, too. Good for her. Oh, yeah. Lots of hoops action at uh, UNLV's Thomas and Mack Center tonight. And News 3's Rick Strasser is in the thick of it. Rick? Tell you what, guys, it was an exciting one out here. I'll tell you how UNLV did in the beginning of the Max Good era here at UNLV. Again, 17th ranked Cincinnati. That's coming up next in sports on News 3, where news comes first. Welcome back to the Thomas and Mack Center, everybody. I'm Rick Strasser. It has been one of the toughest weeks in Rebel basketball history this week. NCAA sanctions, a fired coach, and then they had to focus on Cincinnati, ranked 17th in the country. Let's show you some of the highlights from the Las Vegas showdown. The Max Good era officially underway at UNLV. The Rebels came out firing for their new head coach, Danny Brotherson. Actually, folks, you know what? That's a practice video from this afternoon. We're going to move on to see if we can get the right video queued up. We're going to move on to the Oregon game against Auburn, which was the first game. There you see the alley-oop there for, for Luke Jackson. That put Oregon up. Later on, final miss, Scott Pullman, the baseline jumper to tie it. And we go to overtime. In the OT, Adam Harrington, he will fire the three, and the Tigers hand Oregon his first loss of the season, 101 to 97 is the final score. Shifting the football, the Rebels and the Razorbacks, they're both gearing up for the Las Vegas Bowl, and this afternoon, the Razorbacks, they arrived at Signature Air Station. I can show it to you, too. About 10 o'clock this morning, they pulled in. In just five days, UNLV and Arkansas will kick off Las Vegas Bowl 9. This morning, most of the Razorbacks arrived. The coaches allowed the players to come on their own, but they had to be in town by 5 o'clock, so they are all here. The Razorbacks are excited to be playing in this bowl game. 
I told our guys I trust them. I want them to use good judgment, but I want them to have a good time, and, and I expect them to have a good time. And, and with a city like this, I want them to see some sights, view these pretty mountains and the lights and the whole bit. Now, UNLV doesn't know much about our first time the two programs have ever met. What can you explain about Pig Suey? Uh, Pig Suey, you know, it's just a lot of people just Big soon in, you just gotta, you, you just gotta be a, a hog to, to realize, you know, what what it means and to, to just be a part of it. Can you give me one? Woo, pig suey. We're hearing plenty of that in the week to come. It's final two weeks of the regular season in the NFL, which usually means a couple Saturday games. This afternoon, the Raiders could ill avoid a loss with Denver right on their heels if they want to win the AFC West. They played Seattle this afternoon. Let's go up to Washington. A soggy day out in the Husky land. They're playing where the University of Washington plays. Oakland down 7 0. Rich Gannon has all sorts of time finds. Andre Rising in the back of the end zone. 7 7 is the score. Late in the game, Raiders up 24 19. Ricky Waters gets through the line and is off to the races. Charles Woodson will chop the ball out of his hands, and Marquez Pope will fall on the ball on the one, but the refs say he slid in the end zone and call a safety. Instead of the Raiders running out the clock, the Seahawks score a touchdown in the final minute and go on to win 27 to 24. The other game, Pittsburgh and Washington, in the final game to ever be played at Three River Stadium, the new stadium is 65 yards away. Pittsburgh up 10-3 in the second quarter. Richard Huntley on the draw play, scores from three yards out. Pittsburgh leads later on. Huntley, he was at it again. This time he gets to the sideline uses his blockers and bulls his way in from 30 yards out. Steelers win, the Redskins won't be in the playoffs. Pittsburgh wins 24 to three. Now I did tell you that there was a game here tonight, right? I promise you, UNLV played Cincinnati. Let's look at those highlights. The Max Good era in effect tonight. Danny Brotherson underneath for two. That was nine to one right then. Next time down for the Rebels, Trevor Diggs for three, 12 to one at that point. You saw Cass to Danny, now here's Danny to Cass. Kimbala with the jam, 14 to four at that point, but the Bearcats went on a run. Kenny Satterfield inside for two, gives Cincy his first lead, and I can tell you, they went on to win this one. 90 to 72 was the final score. So they fall to 0-1 in the Max Good era, and that's gonna do it for me. Reporting live from the Thomas Max Center, I'm Rick Strasser, back to you. Okay, Rick, tough break for the Rebels there, but uh, we'll keep rooting for them. They'll be doing much better next time, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us for News 3 Nightside. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great rest of the night. Good night.